so hello everybody this is the final video on the sympathetic nervous system and here we are going to deal with all the false neurotransmitters now um, before we start with the drugs there is one important concept that we need to learn with respect to the to this class of drugs is tachyphylaxis Now, what is meant by tachyphylaxis? Please uh, watch this carefully. Suppose this is a presynaptic adrenergic neuron with the synaptic vesicle, and inside these are the norepinephrines, and the and this is a postsynaptic adrenergic neuron with the adrenergic receptors. and these are all the false neurotransmitters that we are giving so what happens is that once these drugs enter into the synaptic vesicle they displace the true neurotransmitters so the true neurotransmitters will rush out and they will immediately attach to the post synaptic adrenergic receptors and consequently there will be a sympathomimetic effect but what happens when you keep on giving this drug there will come a time when the presynaptic vesicle is completely devoid of all true neurotransmitters and it's filled by all these false neurotransmitters now these false neurotransmitters will not be able to stimulate the post synaptic adrenergic neurons and so there will be a sympatholytic effect and hence the inference that we can get is that at initial doses we will get a sympathomimetic effect but at continuous dosing we will get a sympatholytic effect okay and this phenomenon is known as tachyphylaxis it is actually a mechanism of drug resistance and is unique to this class of drugs so that's that now we'll move on to the actual drugs and the first drug we need to discuss is amphetamine now amphetamine is a racemic mixture of phenyl isopropylamine and if you ask me its mechanism of action is a false neurotransmitter no doubt otherwise i won't be discussing it here it also inhibits dat dat is a dopamine transporter in the cns and it also inhibits the vmat2 transporter i hope you remember about the vmat2 transporter so primarily amphetamine acts by these three mechanisms and this leads to an increase in norepinephrine in the cns and also an increase in dopamine now amphetamine may be used in the treatment of adhd obesity 
and narcolepsy. Please put a star mark beside narcolepsy and come over here. Now narcolepsy is a very interesting disease. Um, in narcolepsy there are re recurrent attacks of REM sleep. REM means rapid eye movement throughout the daytime. And the hypothesis is that there is a decrease level of orexin in the brain. Now what orexin is actually secreted by the lateral hypothalamus and its function is to promote wakefulness and at the same time stabilize sleep a patient who has narcolepsy will have a recurrent attacks of uh, REM sleep throughout the day there is also a phenomenon called cataplexy that is decreased muscle tone during those attacks also the patient will have something called hypnagogic hallucinations that is hallucinations which they will have just before going to sleep okay and pharmacologically the treatment nowadays as uh, the drug of choice is modafinil modafinil its mechanism of action is that it inhibits the DAT transporter in the CNS thereby increasing dopamine levels but um, recently its R enantiomer R modafinil has also come out and this is the one that is being most commonly prescribed nowadays and I would like to mention just one more thing over here this decreased orexin is leading to the narcolepsy and so orexin receptor blockers are used in insomnia and an example of an orexin receptor blocker is suorexin this you will learn more in your CNS portion okay now uh, coming back to the uh, amphetamine um, dextroamphetamine one of the enantiomers is more CNS specific and lix lis dex amphetamine this is a pro drug used for the treatment of ADHD I hope you remember uh, know what ADHD is this attention deficit hyperactivity disorder now one more drug with respect to amphetamine that you need to know is methamphetamine common parlance it is known as crack or crystal meth it is actually a drug of abuse and it's also 
something called a designer drug so whenever a drug has been banned by the narcotic act what the criminals do is that they make a slight chemical modification to the existing structure of the drug and they bring it out so so as to they uh, not so as to not being contrary to the law okay and these drugs are known as designer drugs and the last point we need to remember re- regarding amphetamine is amphetamine toxicity suppose a patient comes who has od'd on amphetamines so we treat it by aluminum hydroxide full diuresis and uh, there are some teratogenic effects as well of amphetamines and these are iugr that is intrauterine growth retardation cardiac effects clef lip and biliary atresia so that's with respect to amphetamine the next drug we need to discuss is ephedrine now ephedrine has been commonly called as a mixed acting sympathomimetic why because besides being a false neurotransmitter it also stimulates the alpha and beta adrenergic receptors so yeah very variable action and i know you are getting a bit confused but yeah this is the mechanism of action of ephedrine and it is commonly used in the treatment of hypotension in pregnancy and hypotension with the use of anesthetic anesthetic agents and is also used as a nasal decongestant and one isomer of ephedrine called pseudo ephedrine is also used as a nasal decongestant and these are mind you not topically acting these are oral and there was one more ephedrine isomer which was used that is nor ephedrine uh, it was used as a nasal decongestant and also as an anorexic agent but has been banned why because of the incidence of cerebral hemorrhage finally uh, these drugs are less important but uh, nonetheless i'll discuss it uh, tyramine tyramine uh, i hope you remember with respect to the cheese reaction and it's high because of its high concentration in red wine and cheese and if a person who is taking uh, mao inhibitors at the same time he will have a something called as a cheese reaction and for the treatment of the cheese reaction we need uh, phentolamine so if you don't remember this please go back and watch the video on the alpha blockers 
uh, I'm sure you'll get it and two more drugs guanethidine and guanadrel Uh, at continuous dosing it they may be used in the treatment of hypertension but again it's not preferred and absolutely I don't think it's used anywhere nowadays it actually worsens pheochromocytoma And so if you're actually prescribing guanitidine and guanitrel for hypertension, you need to rule out pheochromocytoma. And one of the most common side effects you see with this class of drugs is postural hypotension, which is seen even on continuous dosing. So with that we come to the end this was a small portion of few drugs the main is amphetamine uses uh, chemical uh, pharmacokinetics pharmacodynamics and also ephedrine these are the two main drugs which may you may go get questions short notes and viva questions during your uh, exam i remember during my uh, second prof uh, viva i was asked about orally uh, administered nasal decongestants so yeah so Please uh, keep in mind these little points and yeah, okay, thank you.